especially for those of you who really want to be a millionaire and you're not just talking. If you're just talking, then there's a club for that. They look great. They wear all the t-shirts that say that they're a boss and they're doing nothing. Uh, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person behind you. Because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Work Hard Holics. It is January 20th, 2021. It's Inauguration Day. However you feel about it, it is what it is. So, once again, if you're, if it's your first time joining us, you might want to know what exactly is a work hardaholic. Well, a work hardaholic is someone who is always doing something. We don't rest on our laurels. We don't wait till the world to bring to us. We take it to the world. You see your problem, you find a solution. That's what we do, people. All right, but here is the deal. As a work hardaholic... We're better than the average bear. We do more than the average bear, right? But here's the thing. Because we have this issue of excellence, this desire to perform and to get the job done, sometimes we drop off some of the smaller details and other times we forget all about ourselves in the midst of the process. So we say, hey, we want you to get it done. We want you to learn a new word. We want you to expand your vocabulary, be a better communicator. Hmm learn more, potentially add a new book to your, you know, library and still do it all in balance. Gain a new time tool technique. All of that happens Wednesdays, 1 p.m. or whenever you're listening to this Eastern Standard Time right here with Work Hardaholics. All right, who am I? I need you all to like know my song references so that when I make them, I don't have to like uh, like tell you. So I'm just thinking, who am I? But that is a song by The Truth. <laughs> that really is his name. Yeah, the Truth. Who am I? If I, yeah, I need y'all to go listen to it because I should be able to just say that. Y'all should be able to just jump in. It's okay. It's okay. Not only do we have like age differences, we might have some other differences as well. Yeah, but it's okay. Together, we're all work hardaholics, and we're going to take it forward. And speaking of who am I, I am Shirley Crawford, the original work hardaholic. Why am I the original? Because I made the term up. First dibs, first rights, copyright, trademark, me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Glad you like it. All right. I've been doing small business consulting for over 25 years. That's a quarter of a century. I just wanted to point that out because, yeah, that's legit. I'm also the executive director of the Women's Business Center, RVA, that's located in Richmond, Virginia. Author, speaker, blah, 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 blah. If you didn't know, now you know. Or you have some idea. And then my cohort in crime, my partner, who is normally sitting to my left, and obviously you're right, but she's not there. (laughs) She's on Zoom, which I'm sure you can all fully appreciate in 2021. That would be Socialita Christina. I mean, did you hear my buildup? And you gave that, and you. And you only gave me like a little sound effect though. I mean, it was a, it was a good start. Where's the rest of it? <laughs> See, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, a minute. Shh, don't get in trouble with the, with the teacher. No. <laughs> They'd be like, "Excuse me, where's your mo- where's your mother? Can you tell her to quiet it down? This is not a party. It's it's your house." Yeah. No, we got you. Okay. Well, but please tell tell them who you are, Socialita Cristina. do a whole bunch of stuff in the community so make sure that you guys check me out you can check me out on facebook (laughs) on facebook at socialita christina and make sure you're following me on ig at socialita underscore underscore 
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so in case you didn't know, we are currently located in the Imagine Media Lab. Yeah. Where they bring your imagination to life. Totally I know you wish you could imagine yourself here. And for a fee, <laughs> you can. You uh -huh. can be here too. All right, so the Imagine Media Lab is proudly located in the midst of the Women's Business Center at 1510 Willow Lawn Drive, directly across the street from the Kroger at Willow Lawn. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to do a podcast, voiceovers, audibles, if you want to have your own audio to your book, which I want to do that, Christina. Christina with a C is the proprietor of the Imagine Media Lab. She's also the producer of work, Heartaholics. Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking to myself. There is at least someone in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Although Christina with a K is across town. But we're all in this together. I feel like that was a Disney movie or something, right? I'm pretty sure it is. But okay. So first things first. I really just have like all these ditties in my head. Second verse. Same as the first. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am. Yeah. If you didn't know, uh, you know. we we work hardaholics have been working hard for the money. Da, da, yes. da, da, da. So hard for it, honey. And uh, we still haven't had that vacation that I've been talking about for a few months. But... As I have not mentioned before, March is my cutoff. So definitely by the end of March, I will have had the vacation that I need. So you all just got to stick it out with me until then. Right? Yes? Yes? <laughs> yes? Okay, well, well, we'll see. Hopefully you all can bear with me as we go through this turbulent time of a lot going on. But speaking of a lot going on, we were just watching the inauguration right? Because today is Inauguration Day. And yeah. so I have been watching since this morning when they showed, um, I don't think you ever get to be former president. I, don't, I think you're always, they always call you president. Um, uh, so it, I would still say President Donald Trump, even though he's not the current president, he still always holds that title. So I have been watching since, uh, I don't know, a little, a little before eight. And um, they had the red carpet out for President Trump as he left and got onto the plane and apparently went down to Florida. Um, so, yeah. And then I watched so I watched Channel 6, Channel 8. I'm in Richmond. So CBS. I didn't watch NBC. I don't know why. I just didn't. I'm sorry, NBC people. I just didn't watch. So I watched Channel 6, which is CBS. ABC, CBS, 6, 8, no 12. And then I also watched, there was a special just for kids of the inauguration with Kiki Palmer. Did no one else watch this but me? Okay. Were you, you did you weren't even watching the inauguration, were you, Christina? So no. Shelly just like, no, we were in school and that is yes. not what they were talking about today, which is amazing. You would think in school today, that's what they'd be talking about, right? It's like history. Here's a moment in history that we can actually make the history in your history books come to life. That's the kind of teacher that I am. That's all I know. I know that when I teach, I try to make things current and applicable so that it can be exciting and fun. But I also don't have to deal with um, SOLs. So normally when I teach it, it's not at the elementary middle, or middle school level, very rarely at high school. It's normal university. And then I will guest teach or come in and visit at other schools. So Okay, teachers, y'all do what y'all do, but I would have really thought today would have been a great day to talk about civics and, yeah, okay, what do I know? Alrighty then. So then I actually enjoyed, um, although Kiki Palmer is not who I think of as a political commentary, and I, I don't know, maybe she was like the Nickelodeon choice, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I love the keel and the bee, mind you, but I don't, I, I didn't, anyway. I guess that's not what it's about. So it was supposed to be from a youthful perspective of like what was happening. And mm -hmm. I kept saying it reminded me a lot. Like, have have you ever gone to like an athletic event, a sports event in person? Like a professional game? Have you ever been to a professional football game, a professional basketball game, a professional mm -hmm. baseball game? Yes. Yes? Okay. So here is the deal. I have come to realize that I like going in person for the the, the vibe but a lot of times I don't know what's going on, right? So there's a call on the field. I don't get it. I don't know what it means. I'm not sure. I didn't see the play happening. So I, I realized that when I go to these events, there are always these people who have their little 
trans transistor radios and they're listening to commentators whilst they're watching the game and on tv that looks weird but when you're there it makes absolute sense because when you're at home you hear the commentators when you're there live you don't get any of that so today's version of the inauguration i really enjoyed the one for the kids because it was like having the commentators at a sporting event so they went through all these details and information and things you might not have thought about and a bunch of miscellaneous crap that you probably didn't care about like that the fact that there was a presidential raccoon at some point that was like the pet like okay. you know, the obamas had Bo, but apparently they had ralph or whatever the raccoon I was just like, okay, so it was a bunch of trivia that you may not care about, but it was mixed in with some really good information. Like, okay, well, this is why so-and-so is doing this, and this is why this is monumental. And they had these historians, and, you know. I don't know if I was a kid if I would have wanted to watch it. Because as a kid, I would have probably thought, this is boring. But as an adult, I found it to be quite informative. And for those of you who are not very familiar with civics, I think you should probably go back and see if you too can watch the Kiki Palmer version. So, just sharing. But all of that led me, of course, to our word for the day. Our word for the week. All right. Didn't know where that story was taking you? Oh, just come along on the journey and you'll <laughs> figure it out. So, our word for the week is incipience. Okay. Incipience. Right? right? And so basically it means commencement. It means the beginning. It's how something gets started. So I thought with the inauguration, this is the beginning of um, a new term, a new presidency, some historical moments with our first African-American and Asian vice president, our first female vice president. And so there's a lot happening all at once. So yeah. I thought that that merited uh, that word for this week. Incipience. Incipience. I got to work on that. Okay. <laughs> Incipience. Yeah. Incipience. Okay. Right? I mean, if you want to, if you want to sound like, okay, so I was, I was thinking about, oh my God, what's his name? The Gambino, whatever the little boy's name is childish gambino i still okay. don't get it um oh my god and so i said all that and now i can't remember what the, what the point of the matter was See, that's the whole benefit of aging no it's not getting older it's just a lot going on it was the whole this is america thing that i was thinking oh about. yeah yeah and so the the, the child that could and that video confuses me greatly like i, I just want to say go put on the shirt i mean for real Okay, I, I am totally on a sidebar, Christina. I'm gonna come back <laughs> to incipients in just a moment. I promise. But while I have the moment to share a pet peeve, right? So I, I'm always talking about like the fact that I'm dating or trying to. And if I see one more person send me a, sh a picture without their shirt on, and especially when they don't even look good, I'm like, why? Why are we doing this? Um, and even if you look great, can we have a moment of surprise? Do I mm -hmm. do I need that? Although that's better than one picture I got from somebody that we would not talk about. Anyway, <laughs> but as we talk about incipients, about getting things started, about getting things moving, right? Last week we talked about impetus, which is that motion behind, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's that kinetic energy that gets things going. And then with incipients, it's like, okay, we're moving forward. We're commencing. We're beginning. We're getting this started. We're doing something different. Right. Right. And so that to me seemed like the word for the day, like the word du jour. Like it's really what it's all about. So as an entrepreneur, right, you might not be having an inauguration. You might not have a turnover every four years. I hope you don't have a turnover every four years in your leadership. But either way, if you're going to be vibrant, if you're going to be current, if you're going to be a part of your community, then change is change is the only constant right i've always thought that was like the most ironic statement in the world that the only constant in life is change right 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 yeah i like words people geek out with me i just i just think that it's like the best statement ever it's like the only thing that will always be is change period so get used to it and so in your business where is your incipience where where are you showing your incipiency right 
Where are you looking to make changes? Where, what are you evaluating, recognizing, realizing about yourself, your business, your customers, um, the, what you provide? So like right now, we talked a lot, especially in 2020, we talked a lot about pivoting, mm-hmm. right? It was like the key word, like out of nowhere. It's like pivot here, pivot, pivot this. Surely, can you come to a, a session about pivoting? What about pivoting this? What about that? And I'm just like, okay, I get it. I got it. I understand we're having a shared conversation, but pivot from what to what and why it's not enough to make a change to make a change you make a change because you see the need for change correct right so you realize that your uh your clients aren't happy you figure out why you make a change right right? you insert incipiency right all right um you recognize that as i was this is totally random but i'm just giving an example you recognize that like in my case i need to trim my hair ends i had a split end and so that sounds like a simple enough thing but here's the deal my hair is giving me a it's giving me a clue it's right. telling me something i can choose to acknowledge it or i can keep moving like eh, it'll be okay right Right. I also know that because the fact that I dye my hair, not the gray people, the green, the green on the ends right there. See it? That green. I also recognize that that has an impact on your hair. It dries your hair out. It means you have to do extra things. These are the kind of clues that you're getting every day in your body, in your business, in your life. Are you paying attention? So you're perfectly aware that there's a wet paint sign. You know that the wall is wet and yet you still stick your hand there. Like, why? Right? And so when we talk about pivot, when we talk about incipiency or being incipient, incipient um, knowing when to start, when to stop, mm-hmm. yeah. what needs to be started, and how to gauge what's needed in your community, in your business, in your life, in your family, yeah. you don't have to wait for January 1 to do it. Right. All right? It's a universal new start for all of us, unless it's the Chinese New Year, but still there are ways that you should be gauging and 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 making assertions about your business in particular but your life all the same and in my case i gave the example about hair which is a you know kind of inconsequential thing except for the fact that i don't want to be bald yet so not that inconsequential but in the scale of your life what what are the signs are you following them are you understanding them are you looking at them are you paying attention Christina, have you seen anything happening, like any signs happening around about you that are telling you what needs to be happening in your life? Oh, oh my goodness. Um, you know what? I mean, I guess just like you said, you know, when you're in business, mm. um, you kind of got to change with the time. COVID <laughs> by itself really? um, shows you all the changes that you need to make in your life, in your business, or a lot. So, yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of like change or die. Yeah, like people hate it when I say that. I've been saying that for like a couple of decades now. And it's whenever I say it, people are like, "That just sounds wrong." It's the truth. It is so yeah. the truth. And um, sometimes I feel like I'm in a little bit of like a bubble, and I don't know how or why. But um, hmm. I was driving down Broad Street. Um. So driving past VCU, coming down Broad Street, so there is like where it used to be the DTLR and the Dollar Tree mm-hmm. and all those little st- that they burned down during the riots. Yeah. And um, and then so some of that's being rebuilt and then some things are like gone. Like you would think a Dollar Tree would like never go away. I know. It, the, the, the place is fine, but they're gone and they have no intention of returning. And then there was wow. like the DTLR and the other shops that are over there. There are a couple that are there. But even as you drive further down the road, there are so many businesses that are boarded up. Yeah. And so some of them are boarded up just in case you all break out in another riot. Let's mm-hmm. just be honest. Um, and then some of them are boarded up because they're closed. Like yeah. they're shut down. Like that's yeah. it. They have not survived the riots, COVID-19, um, they have not survived. Right. And so, and some people are trying to figure out um, what their next stage of incipiency is going to be. Like, where do they, how do they begin again? Yes. Or can they even come back? Yeah. And frankly, this whole idea of a $1,500 check here and there is not going to change. I mean, for some people, $1,500 is what they make every month. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. 
what does that do when you got that once every six months? Yeah. Tell me about it. You know, I mean, people aren't able to support employees, their businesses, like doors are shut. And even Mm -hmm. now, even with this vaccine, which I probably shouldn't even say this out loud, but I will because I always do. I I tend to say what it is I'm thinking. I filter a lot, people. I really do. You all just wouldn't know, but I really do. Um, I had, um, I wonder if he's watching. A gentleman was talking to me the other day and he was saying he thought that the vaccine was the mark of the beast. Mm. What? Um, for those of you who are not Christian and have no biblical background, that means nothing to you. But a lot of people have have a lot of anxiety, right? In addition to family and financing and just food on the table, like, oh, all yeah. Fs, and we're yeah. failing at it. Um, in addition to all of that, there's all of this, like, fear another f right and some of it's valid some of it's just plain made up right like for real but legitimately speaking in the african-american community when you think about the fact that our government gave us smallpox right i mean that's just that's just legit so for the fact that we are not that we're not even like a generation since then right it's perfectly understandable that we might not stand in line going, yeah, I'm going to take that vaccine. I, I, mm-hmm. I can I can fully appreciate there being some concern. Yes. I don't mean to be ridiculous about it, though. Um, uh, I have been watching uh, one of my nieces. So my sister works for Pfizer. She won't tell me anything. I've still been trying to figure out that she didn't know any details. She didn't tell me anything. And then my niece works for the hospital. And so... Um, they were strongly suggested to get the vaccine. And so I, I love to have conversations with her because she's the one reading all the studies, seeing all the information. And um, and I was surprised when I heard that, did I say this last week? Because I have been, I have, this has been festering in me, to realize that the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. Did we talk about that here? I don't think so. Yeah. But I'm interested. No. <laughs> so the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. Right. It basically keeps you from dying. Right. Okay. I mean, like, that's mm-hmm. it. I didn't. I thought of it like, I thought it was preventative. Like, <laughs> um, for those who got, like, the smallpox vaccination, right? <laughs> I'm so old. Um, when we were kids, there was a song. Um, circle, circle, dot, dot, now you got your cootie shot. Okay. Y'all are so young. Anyway, it was about the indentation one gets in one's arm from the smallpox. I've said that before. That's not the first time saying that. That I know. I don't have it because it happened. They stopped giving it like one year before me. So like one of my closest friends has it. And I don't. And that's what it looks like. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Hmm. And so that is to prevent you from getting smallpox. So I assumed that the COVID-19 vaccine was to do the same. But it's like the flu shot. The flu shot, it gives you a strain or variation. Not of, anyway, I don't want to get into that because I, I don't have the, technical know-how to explain it properly but they give you whatever strain of whatever and so if you get covid then you won't be as sick but i was amazed to realize how many people have gotten the shot and gotten covid like soon after right but here is why um as a as a nation of people we're kind of silly so the instructions say you get part one you get shot one Mm -hmm. then you come back and get shot two yeah okay and so um i think there's this natural arrogance that we have Mm -hmm. because people are getting the shot and i believe this is a surely the the surely thought i believe that you get more reckless you're like oh well i'm I'm covered i'm good right you're not right it it takes 14 days to germinate it takes at least two weeks for it to kick in people Mm -hmm. And that's not including the fact that you need a shot one and a shot two. Right. Okay, I don't know how we got into this because you all, I took you all on my journey of my, my brain. And I guess because I really am thinking about incipients, right? When we're talking about getting things started and the state of our communities, there are so many people who are suffering. And so yeah. there's a sadness to it. So like even when watching the inauguration today, and um, I will admit in times past, I wasn't a big person for watching the entire day of the inauguration. Uh-huh. Um, 
my first inauguration I went to, I went to the inauguration of uh, President Obama. And that was because that was historic. First mm-hmm. African-American president. And I didn't think I would see that in my lifetime. So right. I was amazed. Like, I just knew that wasn't going to happen. So I was very excited about that. And so since that time period, I have been very engaged and watching what's happening politically. Um, but we just had January 1. Uh, we just had Martin Luther King Day, right? And then, and now we have the inauguration. And so I feel like... There's possibility and hope, but it's a matter of perspective. Right. So when we talk about incipience and getting things started, the question for all of us is what are you going to do with what you've been given? Right? We all right. get this fresh start. If you're still breathing and, you know, lucid in your thought process, then then you have the possibility to get something done. And so what is it going to be? What are you going to commence? What are you going to make happen? Where where shall we see your incipiency lie? Right. That's what I'm. I, I am most curious to know and ho- and hopeful to hear. Right. So I'm hoping with this new presidency that um, we'll be moving forward in the right direction. We'll see. Yeah, that's pretty much all we can all do. <laughs> we'll see. All my fingers crossed. That's not a gang sign, but I am very <laughs> proud of the fact that I can do this. Can anyone else do this? Oh God! It's what. Both of them? I don't know. If it's someone else's gang set, it's not mine. I'm just always fascinated by the fact that I can do that. Anyway, I think it's all the years of playing the violin that makes my fingers, like, flexible. Yeah. All right, so back to where we're supposed to be. All right, so on that note, though, so we talk about incipients, we talk about moving forward, we talk about commencing new starts. I want to introduce our Book It moment. Our book for this week, once again, I feel like I'm in repeat. I don't know why. Um... There is a study that shows you have to say something eight times before like anyone gets the message. So mm-hmm. it's one thing I teach my clients, like whenever you're sharing, if you have a theme, a message, a sale or whatever, mm-hmm. you say it eight times in eight different ways, right? So that right. means you make a post on, if, I, if I, what I want you to know is hug your customer, that's the name of the book. Then I put it onto Instagram, put it onto TikTok, I put it onto Facebook, I might put it into my LinkedIn, I might put it into my newsletter. I'm going to do eight different things. Mm-hmm. And some of them I might repeat. I might do like two or three posts on Facebook, whatever I, whatever I deem appropriate, but I'm going to do it a minimum of eight times. Right. If I was a Gary Vee fan, I'd be doing it 19 times. Jesus. Okay, I am a Gary Vee fan, but oh my goodness, it's a lot of required that of is. things that you talk about. All right, so this is Hug Your Customer by Jack Mitchell. And it way, it's ways to personalize your sales, basically to increase your sales results by increasing your relationship with your client, your customer, right? And so here's the thing. Some of these things I always think are really simple, but um, for some reason, they seem too complex for most of us to do. I don't know why, but that's just the case. So one of the things they mention in chapter 36, I feel like I'm teaching to another class. I used to read the kids. So I just feel, okay, I'm back. All right. So in chapter 36, they talk about be a mirror. And so when I think back to my time at GE, and even now when everyone's talking about diversity and inclusion, Mm -hmm. like um, they had a study done. I haven't worked for GE in decades. That was a long time ago. Um, Yeah, it's been decades. I'm 50. I said it. I'm 50. What? I'm a quinquagenarian. Um, so it's been decades since I worked for G. And there was a study that either they had done or they participated in. And it, and it shared how um, diversifying your staff and your, you know, your leadership, everyone, actually increased how much money you make in those populations. It increased your bottom line. That was really mm-hmm. the bottom line was by having more people who don't look like you in your staff, mm-hmm. you actually made more money. Right. And to me, that seems like really obvious because like even now we do the, we do this podcast. Right. And mm-hmm. so I do this podcast with a socialita, Christina, who mm-hmm. is I can't say her age because right now I can't really think what it is. Neither way she didn't say I could anyway, <laughs> but she is younger. All right. And then we have our producer who is also younger. So although um, we're all African-American women, it comes from different ways. So mm-hmm. like. Christina with a K has Dominican in her 
Mm-hmm. In case she's that's, that's why she has a business in the Dominican Republic. That's part of her people. <laughs> right? And so, like, I have Native American and plain old Caucasian. And uh, not that I can date it back to the slave master part of it, but really close, a lot closer than that. <laughs> My great-grandmother is white. Okay, great. Moving along. Um, and so Native American, Caucasian, and then, you know, fight the power of Black people. And <laughs> then... For Christina, you know, Christina with the C who's over there enjoying her tea. I don't know all of her nationality, but here it is. We have three African-American women, totally different in age and um, socioeconomic differences. And so when we come together to have a conversation, I am getting the other side. I'm getting another angle. So like Christina with a K, I will have like random conversation with her about stuff that she does because I'm going, okay you did X, Y, Z, or you posted this, or you said that. Right. And for me, that's different. Like for me, that would mean this. What does that mean for you? And and why is this okay? Why is that not okay? And then they're constantly here trying to tell me stuff like, you got to do it for the gram, which I'm just like, duh. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like they, they keep me relevant. Right. And I keep them referenced. Right? right. So I bring the history. I bring the information. I bring that back, the roots. And they're the, and they're the leaves and the branches going, okay, we got that. Now we're going to go do X, Y, Z. So mm-hmm. for some companies, they figured it out. And this one, they talk about be a mirror. All right. And that's really what it means. So with regards to your staffing, your business should be a reflection of the community you service. Mm-hmm. I love I love that. So when we talk about hugging your customer, if you were in a predominantly um, Jewish community, then even if you're not Jewish, I would expect you to honor Hanukkah. Absolutely. Right. I mean, if that's if that's the, your if that's predominantly your your client base, then why wouldn't you know that? If you have a predominant African American base, I expect you to know what Kwanzaa is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Whether you celebrate it or not, all African Americans don't celebrate it. Mm-hmm. But right. I would expect you to be aware of that information. I would expect that you would know that you can't schedule a meeting with me on MLK Day. Ask me to somebody try. Uh, I, I would expect you to know that information because as you're as you're a customer, you care enough about my details. It's no longer just knowing the name of my kids. I don't have any. Um, it's no long. It's about a little bit more than that now. It's like really tying in to your population, right? Right. So that's what that one chapter talks about. So the whole point of hug your customer, hug, hug. In this day and age, everybody needs a hug. All the social distancing, y'all just need a hug for real. I mean, I, I can see it on your faces. You need some. Reach out and touch <laughs> somebody's hand. Y'all need some connection. I can tell. Woo! We can do it and not be reckless though. Really. Mask people. See my mask. My mask. It's the purple thing. In case you thought I didn't have, know how to color coordinate, <laughs> that is my mask. <laughs> All right. And so that's just one of the things that talks about, like being being the mirror, right? And so, and when you are really a part of your community, you actually understand their needs. You know how to provide, right? And then it talks about visit the territory, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, there, there are lots of examples that it talks about. What, and, and the thing that gets me is that most of the time, if we were to say, how, how can you increase sales? Then we say, oh, increase our Facebook ads or, you know, launch this commercial. But this is giving you all these techniques and most of which are dun, 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 free. Yeah. They're just kind hearted considerations. Like for us this Christmas, if, if anyone has been to my office, I recognize it's the end of January. I still have Christmas cards on my door. And uh, I'm not ready to take them down yet because they give me a warm and fuzzy feeling because who writes letters? Christina, when's the last time you wrote a letter to somebody? Oh, God. It's been it's been at least a year. You're doing better than most because a year is still not that long ago. Right. Um, I actually hand-signed Christmas cards this year. Okay. That felt like an accomplishment. I'm going to tell the truth. I was just like, oh my goodness. Can I just send an email? I've sent e-cards. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I have I done. sent postcards. I'm sorry. So a letter has been a long time. I sent postcards. But still, that's writing. Like, that's yeah. taking the time to stop and write. Like, my handwriting is horrible because it's been so long since I write anything. Although my handwriting has been horrible for a long time. Since I learned how to use a computer back in my freshman year of high school, 1984. The summer of 1984, I learned how to do basic programming. And after that, it was all downhill. Like everything was typed after that. That was it. And my handwriting has sucked ever since. I worked at the hospital and someone was like, are you one of the doctors? I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, you have doctor's writing. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, interpolate that. All right. So, uh, a lot of great tips on how to hug your customer, how to show them that you care about, like right now in particular, um, not my customers, but from some of the, some of the members of my church during this time period, I actually bought a bunch of cards and, um, I signed them. There's no money. There's nothing inside. It's just, I just said, hi, I'm thinking about you. That's it. Some of them I delivered. Some of them I mailed, and then I have a bunch I haven't sent out yet. So if you're going, you didn't send me one, and eh, you might be in the next batch that never went out. Okay. Um, but that's the kind of thing. Like if 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 just think about that. Think about what you would want and how it would make you feel, mm-hmm. and you can probably imagine what your customers would say about that. So like right now, I, I've gotten a couple emails from some of the businesses that I do business with. And they've offered me like discounts or special or free trials. Like there are, at, who was it just the other day that said, hey, you can have this month free. Or if you think about it, like even for Zoom, right? Which everyone is on. We're on Zoom right now. Yeah. We're on a Zoom, 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 a Zoom. And so Zoom gave everyone free access for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, right? That's the kind of stuff that makes you go, oh, that was really sweet. Yeah. Because if anything, those were the days that would have made more people sign up. Mm-hmm. And instead of making it all about the marketing and the sales, they made it about their community. Right. When you do those types of things, people remember. Mm-hmm. That's true. They remember. And especially considering that there are very few new ideas under the sun. If I have to choose between you and uh, someone else that's not you, and you're doing the same thing. I think the quality is similar, but I know that you actually care about me as a human being. Mm-hmm. You're going to get my business. Yeah. Even if you might potentially cost a little bit more. Right. I'm like, that's a relationship I'm willing to nurture and cultivate and keep. Yeah. Just saying. So we want you all to think about ways you can hug your customer. Now, one way that we want to hug all of you is that we're going to have our Socialita business check-in. Yes. So this segment is where we shout out business um, in the businesses, excuse me, in the Virginia area. Um, So if you want us to shout your business out, make sure that you DM us as soon as possible. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so a couple businesses that I'd love to shout out is, of course, shout out to Abundant Life Church of Christ. Whoop, whoop. A-L-C-C. And you guys are always supporting the mo- the Work Hardaholic movement, so thank you, thank you. Um, Imagine Media Lab, where they are producing this amazing show. If you need a podcast, if you need assistance with a promo video, make sure that you check out Imagine Media Lab. Shout out to Christina. Whoop, whoop. Okay. <laughs> All right. Second Chance Consulting. That is with Shirley Crawford. So if you are in need of uh, business assistance um, and some business coaching, business mentoring, or you just really don't know what to do, you just know you want to get into business, check out <laughs> Second Chance Consulting. Okay. All right. Uh, so Shalitha, of course, if you need assistance with social media management, content creation, check us out. We also do photography. So make sure that you check out Socialita. Um, I'd also like to shout out uh, photography by Holly Freeman. Um, and we were talking about writing letters and postcards. If you're someone that 
um, is looking to just put a little personal touch on something, check her out. She does landscape photography and she sells um, postcards with her photography on it. Um, so make sure that you check her out because it's affordable. It's helping a small business and she's amazing. She okay? is. Yes, she is. So I also, last but not least, would like to shout out Mike King. Hey there, Mike King biz. Yes. <laughs> so if you are, um, you know, looking for someone that knows about just the business in general, radio, um, all of that, check out Mike King biz. I like <laughs> the smile at the end. Like, <laughs> the end. Yeah. Um, and today's hashtag is change with the times. Oh, well. Yes. I'm going to go use that. <laughs> I'm going to go use that. Change with the times. Yes. Change with the times. Stagnancy stinks. That's mm-hmm. how I would put it. But yeah, it does. Okay. I spend too much time at the water. That's <laughs> I think in terms of water flow. All right. Um. Okay. So as we talk about business shout outs, I just saw Christina with a C um, was pointing something out to me. I already knew this one, but I still thought it was. It's worth mentioning. So did you see this morning, Christina with a K, that uh, Rita Ricks and Benita Johnson were doing a commentary on the inauguration? Yes. (laughs) You got to love it. You got to love it. And I feel like they make me think I should drink wine. I don't. I know, right? I don't don't drink wine. I I don't really like alcohol. I'm just not a fan. And so... um, but they make it look like it's like the coolest thing ever, right? Like, like they're talking about like all the, the historical moments. And so many of you all were wearing your know, pearls and chucks. And, uh, and they were just, and they were just, they were just going, they look so relaxed. Like they were just having the best work day. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, she did. The best work day ever. They're just like talking about the inauguration and what's happening and having all kinds of side conversations. Like it was like you were sitting in the living room with them. So um, <laughs> shout out to Rita Ricks LLC and yes. to Benita Johnson. Um, yes. It's the wine. Oh my goodness. What's the name of her company? Uh, Vine Wine. Is that? Vineyard Wines. How come you all both knew when I couldn't think of it? But yes, I thought that Vineyard. Vineyard. Y'all, I'm going to need y'all to speak English. So, V-I-N-E-Y-A-R-D is Vineyard. Thank you both. No, I thought she was saying... No, no, no. She has a... I think she's in a club called... Yes! Vine, she Vine does have Wine. a club. She has a... If someone else sees this and knows, please drop it in yes. our chat and let us know. I know where it's located. I know they're down Broad Street. And yes. it's a really pretty area. Like, you have to go down the little spiral staircase in the yeah. whole nine. Right anyway, the Renaissance. Um, yes. Yeah. You better go, Christina with the K. Socialita. <laughs> so, um, keeping all that in mind, we want you all to be pivoting. We want you all to understand, like, your incipient state. Like, what are you doing to get started? Um, we talked about hugging your customer and things you can be doing to mm-hmm. to make that relationship better. Right. And. It, that's that's leading us into our time tool technique for the week. And so as we're talking about getting things started, getting things done, making things happen, it helps to have some accountability, potentially to have coaching. Right. Yeah. And you, you would think I'd be segueing into saying, hey, she gets services from Second Chance Consulting. But that's not mm-hmm. what I'm about to say. Maybe later. What I'm going to say right now is there's an app for that. I love that statement. There's an app for that. And there is this one. So there are multiple accountability apps and accountability options. And the one I want to share is called coach.me, coach me. Okay. All right. And so they, they promote it as this reasonable option. So like the fact that if you wanted to have me as your coach, or your consultant, mm-hmm. I'm a few hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. I don't blink when I say it, I'm worth more. Mm-hmm. And so this gives you an option if you're not ready to be at that level where you can do a few hundred dollars an hour, mm-hmm. um, then you can potentially find some options on this app for like $15 a month. Okay. I didn't see any, but they say potentially they're out there. I didn't dig down too deep. The whole thing is that you are signing up for coaching or consulting with a real person. Right. 
So it's not just the app. And so it's personal coaching, personal consulting. And so you sign up. There's someone who gives you tasks, assignments. They might come and they might give you daily inspiration. They might come in once a month and talk to you. Whatever the case may be, some of it might be in a group. Some of it might be one-on-one. It's a variety of things. And they had a lot of different topics, right? So some of them were like time management, productivity. They had a business category. I am not, I am neither confirming or denying what I think about it. Uh, I kind of want to test it out so that I can really like tell you more about it. But overall, if you're looking for some accountability, it really, it's really a good option. There are other options that are free or, you know, yeah, there, there are other options that are free, but I like the idea of there being someone who you're actually accountable to. Right. So there were a couple other apps where it's like you have a friend of yours, then they will they will confirm that you have done what you're supposed to do. Or there are other apps that um, what they do is they they cross the data. So let's just say you have a fitness goal and you say, I'm going to do 10,000 steps a day, which I have yet to say, because I'm really like at 6,000 and okay with that. We'll see about getting to 10,000. Although I do plan to do a half marathon. Okay. I need you all to like, like, uh, like just break out an applause. I just said a 50 year old <laughs> is planning to do a half marathon in 2022. Okay. I'm like, for real, that's real. I hurt, I hurt thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, so um, if your goal were 10,000 steps a day, then it would, uh, one of the apps will cross reference with your fitness tracker, which I don't have mine on but I do have a yellow band on my arm where my watch normally is. Yeah, that's called a sundan. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it would cross-reference with your smartwatch, smart tracker, and see whether or not you are (laughs) doing what you're supposed to be doing. And they have different levels of accountability and some other things. And so, hello there. Um, So that's just part of what happens with that. So I am recommending that you at least try either Coach Me or some other app or or, or option for accountability. So I'm not giving them 100% referral for me. I'm just saying, here's an option for you. Give it a whirl. See what you think. Ready? Okay. All right. So on that note, we're going to slide into our work hard, play harder moment. And all the things that we do, we constantly talk about the fact that we have to do it in balance right it's not good enough that you're making a million dollars and you're you're just oh you're making an impact on the world but you're going to be sick and not going to live to see the benefits or the rewards of what you've done right Mm -hmm. so we always talk about living in balance so we said we work hard but we play harder and then we business better that's our theme in case you didn't know all right So what I did want to talk about, because I've mentioned it before and I've gotten a couple of questions, so I'm giving a little more information and then I will in turn come back and hopefully next week I will give you the full rollout. Uh, So here's the deal. A few years ago, was it just a few years ago? Hmm. Let's say five years ago. Five years ago, I, uh, along with Teresa Kelly, and um, some members of Collaboration, I created this program called Accounted For. Mm -hmm. And so we rolled it out for Senator Warner's Virginia Women's Conference. I've said that before. And so I'm bringing it back, but a modified version. And so um, what's going to happen is February 1. I mean it, people. I'm not kidding. Even if it's the, the, the day before that I'm sending you the link, no matter what, February 1, it gets rolled out. Mm-hmm. Be a part of it. Um, and so what's happening is, is that we're having, we're setting up, a, there are two different sites, two different two different groups. At present, there are two different groups, but I would love your feedback to know if it should just be one or if I should keep it with the two. So one is along the lines of accounted for, right? Where we're going to help you set up your goals, figure out how to reach your goals, and then keep you accountable with a group of other a group of other like-minded individuals. So if you're like me 
and I have like some, you know, don't go by the shirt. The shirt is quite blousy. But in general, I have some, I have some white weight loss goals. I have some health goals, I should say. It's not just really about weight loss. I have some health goals. Like I want to be able to run this half marathon. I am going to run this half marathon. Right. So maybe there's someone else out there that's like, well, I don't know if I want to run. Like I have a friend of mine. I told her I want to do a half marathon. She wants to do a triathlon. Okay. She, but she's always been like ahead of my curve. Like, <laughs> so like she was running like 10 Ks when I was walking. <laughs> and so then she's the one who got me started running. So it, it makes perfect sense that I'm at a half marathon point and she's at a triathlon point. Makes perfect sense. And so, but there's a way to keep accountable. Like, okay, are you doing your workout? So first to say, so right now I am working out with a friend of mine who does marathons all over the world. He's helping me to make it my schedule for my, for my training for my half marathon, right? Because that's the first step. I have a goal. We're setting out many goals to accomplishments and things that we have to do and little tests in between and repercussions if things aren't happening. And so that's just an example of what happens when you have an accountability circle, right? Just an example, just an example, right? But then on the other side, you all know my passion and love is all about entrepreneurship. And there's so many of you all that I really want to work with, but either you can't afford me you don't know the full value of what you get with working with me mm-hmm. or really I'm a limited commodity. Like there, there, even as a work hard holic, there's still only 24 hours in a day. And I actually do sleep. I might not sleep for eight hours, but still I actually do have sleep. I actually have downtime. I don't work on Fridays. Like I take care of me and, um, and others for that matter. So, it limits how much time I have to work with people one-on-one. So the other group at present is going to be, um, it's entrepreneurship, startup, uh, it's different stages, startup, been in business two years or so, and sharing different things. Like I'm going to work through like the real deal on like how to do a business plan, um, marketing, um, financial pieces, bringing in speakers, like the whole nine, like a whole deal. And instead of having to concern yourself with, can I afford this? Or even like having to get it all, like being lumped in in one seminar, one session, each month, there'll be a different topic, a different theme, potentially either myself or another speaker. There'll be an accountability session, or I should say a rollout session. So an implementation session is what it's called. All right, so all that's going to be happening. So if you're interested, remind me, let me know, and I'll be sending out some information. And I'm lim- I am I have to limit how many people can participate. Okay. There are other people who have these, and they do them like thousands of people. No, not right now. Thanks. I am, my max is 50, period. So, and I kind of like it to be smaller than that. Uh, I'm, I'm very much into quality. So if you want to participate, send me a message. Okay. There is a fee. Uh, and right now, um, it's going to be, for at least the first year, it's going to be $50 a month. As opposed to the 200 and something an hour. You get, you get a little extra. So it'll be 50 a month. But for those who are coming in a part, as a part of my beta test as I'm developing and getting it all set up, it's 35 a month. So. Okay. Yeah, I have I have certain people that please don't tell me you even heard me say those prices because I'm going to get lectured for being too cheap. But it is what it is. I I I I'm trying to reach more of you, and so but let me know like like which way you think that should go. Like, what do you think, Christina with a K? Do you have an opinion? <laughs> no, sign me up. No, I'm just... <laughs> but um, no, I don't know. But I'm just, I'm I'm really trying to figure out should it just be. Because I have the capacity to do more, but I'm like, should I make it all one? I, there's so much to accountability that I feel like I want to keep it separate. Right. And then in the business aspect, like if what you really need is to know about marketing, do you want to sit through a month of dealing with goals and goal settings when that's not what you're really focused on? Hmm. Oh, I mean, yeah, I think you should keep them separate. That's I think we're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so I'll be looking for that. I'll be sending out emails. If you know you're interested, send me a message because I am so sincere about not making it a big group. I'm so sincere about that. 
I'm just capacity limited. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially if we're going to do it quality. After a while, we'll, we can increase it and add more moderators and do some other stuff. But this first round is really with me. The second round, I don't know. It might be with a staff person. But this first round, it's, it's going to be my heart on the line with your heart making it happen. Mm-hmm. All right. All of that joy to say. It's been real, people. Mm-hmm. So we hope that uh, even though we are culminating here, that you are in, a, in the midst of your incipiency, and engaging in your community, engaging with your neighbor, Absolutely. engaging in your business with your customer, with your staff. Mm-hmm. I so sincerely hope and desire for each of you that you're making an impact in the lives of those around you, that you aren't so self-absorbed, so self-contained, mm-hmm. that you don't recognize the benefits that, that happen when you connect with other people. And that's the Absolutely. introvert speaking. There is still a power in the connection. Yeah. Use your resources. Most definitely. Yeah. All right, Christina with the K. Anything else you want to share with us? Anything else coming up? Anything else that we need to know? And what's that hashtag again? Ooh. That hashtag. <laughs> oh God. I think I forgot the hashtag myself. <laughs> Impact today. No, no, it was change. Um <laughs> That's okay, people. Change we with have... the times. Ah, thank you. Change with the times. Um, so, yeah, so do I have anything coming up? No, I have a couple of photography sessions, but other than that, that is it. Um, so don't forget, it is wedding season coming up, prom season. Just is because it? you can't physically go to prom, don't let your, your daughter or your son miss out on those special moments, you know? Check me out. So should be the REA.com. Is it any of the I'm like, what is it? Hmm. I'm just thinking it's January. Yeah, right. but people are preparing to get married during the springtime. This is true. I wouldn't know. Yes. And then prom, you know, young ladies are looking for their dresses. They normally start now. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we got it. We got it. Mm-hmm. Having babies and stuff. Newborn photography. Check me out. Check it <laughs> what out. What do you have going on? Uh, it's January 20th. Right now, I am in the midst of um, um, working. There's a study that's happening in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. And so it is a study um, assessing the needs. It's the ecosystem of people of color in mm-hmm. the metropolitan Richmond area. And so that has been taking up a bunch of my time and a bunch of my thoughts. Like we have a big meeting on Friday and it's been going on for months, but it ends in like a month. And so, and when it's over, there'll be a whole study. And from that study, I'm really excited and hopeful that that'll be information that can be used to bring more funds to the area, to bring Mm -hmm. more resources to the area, to do more things that we need done. And um, so I'm hopeful. So okay. that's that's the biggest thing for me right now. Um, yeah, I'm still working on having a social life. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, not having a good time. So yeah. I am giving myself. I don't know how, because the pandemic is not working with me. But when we talk about quantifiable goals, people, everything for me comes back to quantifiable goals. My quantifiable goal, and I really shouldn't say it out loud because I don't want to be held accountable for it. Okay. But that's why we say things out loud, to be held accountable. Right. Um Yeah, to have a day for Valentine's Day. Oh. That's my social goal. I don't know how, because I'm I'm trying to tell you that I'm, I have oh. I have I have uh I have burned my way through a long a lot of lists of eh, no, mm, no, mm, okay. what, what? Yeah. I just knocked somebody else off my list yesterday for something else. Just like I sent a text to my friends, I'm like, uh, if somebody does this is it bad that I'm just like, goodbye? And they were like, no, you okay. <laughs> okay. okay Thank yeah. you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have a lot of time. So we have to. Oh, we do not. We got to find. I, I do not. Yeah. I do not know. I do not know. So that's happening. And um, getting ready. I'm working on the site for the membership site. Yes. For everything that's going to kick off on February 1. And then. Uh, I have a bunch of other little goals. And then, of course, I'm here at the center. And where else in the world would I want to be? 
Right. I mean, come on. It's lovely. Although there are only two of us <laughs> here today. <laughs> it's oh, it's just two of us, right? It's two of us. A oh, whole 10,000 square feet. <laughs> two, people. two people out there. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to get back to my office. Let me get some work done. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's what's happening in our neck of the woods. So we're wrapping it up and saying, you know, goodbye. And uh, um, thanks for joining us, Ray Fenwick. Um, Also, (laughs) of course, COC author, the author, none other than herself. (laughs) Um, Follow back uh, this is we like you too. Thank you very much. Glad you were here with us. All right. And um, I can never see all the way over there, but Life Lovers Balance. Hey there. Glad you were with us today, Rhonda. All right. So we're saying goodbye. Um, as we always say, we want you to live better, do better, be better, and happy entrepreneuring. Ta ta. by building your brand success through social media management. We're located at 1510 Willowlawn Drive, Suite 100. Our website is www.socialitarva.com. You can also give us a call at 804-484-2001. Again, Socialita. Imagine Media Lab, in partnership with the Women's Business Center, offers hourly rental to a multimedia studio, create or edit digital assets for marketing, record that podcast you've always wanted to start, voiceovers and live stream. All equipment and software is included in your hourly rental. Located at the Women's Business Center, 1510 Willow Lawn Drive, Suite 100, ImagineMediaLabs.com. Book your session today. Ladies, are you looking to move your office from your kitchen table to a space of your own? Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Are you looking for co-working and community? Well, then come join us at the Women's Business Center, RVA, located at 1510 Willow Lawn Drive, Suite 100, directly across the street from the Kroger at Willow Lawn. Visit us on the web at wbcrva.com or on social media at wbcrva. When you're ready for more than just office space, come join the WBCRVA family.